Hi, I'm Rachel Carroll. I am the co-founder and I'm the manager of operations for the Carroll Home Team. I'd like to talk to you about what happens after you get an accepted offer on a home. What does the contract process look like? What are the obligations of the contract? And how do we ensure a smooth road to the closing table? First things first, um, I will cover some of the industry specific lingo in hopes that that kind of helps better acquaint you or make you feel more comfortable with the terms that are written into your contract and the terminology that um, the people you're working with that are gonna help facilitate um, this smooth closing, the smooth road to the closing, they're gonna use some industry specific lingo and I would like for you to know what that is. Uh, the second thing that I want to cover is a general timeline for a real estate transaction here in our area. And I also want to cover some of the expectations for the different milestones that we know we're going to encounter along the way. All of these things are going to be extremely helpful to you as you walk this road forward. So first things first, you're going to have an executed contract once you have both the selling side and the buying side final signatures on the final revisions. Once everybody has signed and initialed on the final revisions of the contract, that's when your contract is executed or what we call ratified as well. And that is going to be the catalyst for all of the milestones and timelines that are written into your contract. So we start from the effective date and we go forward. The first milestone that you're gonna come up to is the escrow deposit. We also call this the earnest deposit. It could be called the EMD or the good faith deposit. It's got a lot of different names, but essentially what it means is that once you have your offer accepted and all of the final signatures are on the final revision of your offer, then that starts the timeline. You typically have anywhere from three to five days to send your good faith deposit into the title company. Title company is going to be a third party company that's going to facilitate all of the hefty paperwork that is involved to get you to the closing table and to be able to convey a clear title to you when you purchase the home. Their job is very important and you're going to send your escrow deposit to them. They will hold it. Again, they're a third party unbiased um, party that's just going to hold that for you um, as we go through the different milestones of your contract and jump through the different hoops. The amount of your escrow deposit can vary widely. It just depends on the negotiations that you and your agent have made. And of course, they can always advise you best on what's the most appropriate you're going to want to fulfill your obligation of getting that escrow deposit in on time. I know it's a short window, but it's very important that you get it in right away to the title company. It doesn't make you liable for anything. It doesn't um, put you in any harm's way. Actually, what it does is it funds the beginning of the transaction. If you do not meet your deadline, technically you could be in default of contract. Now, typically this is not a big deal on this little escrow deposit because you will get it into the title company. But where it could get sticky is if you're in a multiple offer situation or if perhaps the seller received a higher offer after they went under contract with you and they could be holding it as a backup offer. If you default on your terms of the contract, even at the, this very, very early stage, they could pull out without penalty and accept somebody else's offer. We don't want that to happen to you. Right here as well is where I'm going to st stress how absolutely important it is to have an agent who knows what they're doing, who knows the obligations of the contract and can advise you the very best. It is integral to your success here. So your next milestone is going to be your inspection period. And this is a big one. All right. This is where everybody is full force, trying to make sure that you are covered, that you are protected. So your escrow inspection period, typically in our area, can I'm just talking typicals, can range in between seven to 15 days. Typically, you're gonna see it between the seven and 10 day period, but it depends on what has been negotiated on your contract. So you have from the executed date, 
seven days or 10 days or whatever that looks like, let's use 10 as a generalization to get all of your inspections scheduled, conducted, and the reports back to you to review during that window. So some of the inspection reports you might want to see are um, a general home inspection, uh, which will cover the, all of the parts of the home generally. Your insurance company might want a wind mitigation, which covers all of the openings of the home and the life of the roof. Um, they might want a four point, which is going to check all of the major components of the home. That would be um, roof, electric, plumbing, and air conditioning. If you have a septic tank, you may want to have a septic inspection conducted. If you have well, you might have, want to have the water tested. Um, in instances where you're purchasing a vacant lot, you might want to have an environmental uh, study done on the property. I always recommend that you have a WDO or a wood destroying organisms um, inspection conducted by a pest company here locally. So there is a plethora of different inspections that you can have conducted and really your agent is going to be able to advise you on which ones you really need to have and which ones you might be able to opt out of depending on the construction of your home or the presence of different things like I just mentioned. Now a few things that are really important to note about the home inspection is number one, it is an immediate cost to you. It is not something that you can defer to your closing statement. So whatever inspections that you have conducted, whether you move forward with purchasing the house or not, is going to be an expense to you that has to be paid immediately upon completion. The second thing that I want to note is a lot of times we get this question of, do I attend the inspection? Do I not attend the inspection? What is my obligation there as the purchaser of the home? And what we like to say is, the inspection can last up to three and a half to four hours. We do not expect you to attend the full inspection. Actually, we really advise against attending the full inspection because we always have an inclination to talk to the inspector and this could be very distracting and actually distract them from catching some things that are going on with the home that you would need to know about. So we really actually strongly advise against you attending the inspection. However, you can choose to if you'd like to, that's fine. Um, but what we do recommend is that you show up to about the last 30 minutes to 20, 20 to 30 minutes, catch the tail end of the inspection when the inspector uh, has a clear head, a clear understanding of his findings with the home, and he can give you the summary. It allows him to do his work undistracted and then that also allows the opportunity to have a face-to-face -face with him you can walk the home and see if there was anything found a small link on a small leak under a sink or a big leak on the roof or whatever that looks like you can actually walk the property with him and see it for yourself so that's typically what we would recommend with the inspection um, so the other thing that I want to advise as well is that your inspection basic home inspection is probably going to run you around $300 and any add-ons can total anywhere up to $600 to $1,000 depending on what your home needs. But it's very, very, very important that you have these inspections conducted so you can mitigate your risk so that we make sure that we catch anything that's going to be unforeseen or unexpected for you ahead of time. The last thing that I'm gonna mention here about the inspection is that once you have your inspections conducted, if there is something that pops up on that inspection report, what are your options? You have three, pretty much. So your first option is going to be move forward, don't request anything if there's not any big deal items on there. Every single home is going to have things come up on an inspection report. Even a brand new home will have things on there. It's just how it is. Um, so either you can choose to do nothing because they're just minor things that don't matter much to you. The second thing is you can choose to back out of the contract if the things that you found are just too significant or you're worried about it. If you want to, to back out and move on to the next home or the next search, you can do that. The third thing is you can request repairs for the items that are found or a credit to be negotiated to reimburse you for the work that will later need to be done to repair those items. So really, 
one of three options, and your agent is going to be able to advise you on the best course of action. Okay, so moving on from the inspection, the next couple of things that need to happen is you need to have an appraisal survey and an elevation certificate and a title commitment. Typically, all of these things um, are put into motion after we've cleared the inspection period because all the parties that are involved here to help push everything forward for you, we don't want you to incur more expenses than necessary. So if you're in the middle of your inspection and you decide that you want to back out and pursue a different home, we don't want to go ahead and order um, a survey and a, a appraisal and all of those things that you're also going to have to come out of pocket for. So a lot of times we like to wait until the inspection period is completed, uh, around that 10 day mark, 15 day mark after your executed date, uh, about the middle point actually of this whole process, and then we'll start ordering those things that your lender needs. Now, if you are not getting financing and you're paying cash for the transaction, then these things are totally up to you at your discretion. You can have them done if you want a survey, if you want an appraisal done, but they're not necessary. If you have a lender, they are going to be required by your lender. So your transaction coordinator at this point is going to go all in on helping make sure she coordinates with everybody that their various reports have been ordered and everything's going to happen in a timely manner. All right, so let's talk about the appraisal. The appraisal is ordered by your lender and it's going to determine a very accurate very accurate assessment of the property's current market value. So it's conducted by a licensed property appraiser and it's going to be a very, very detailed report. And what this is going to tell your lender is that the money that they're lending towards the purchase of the home is a good investment for them. They don't want to lend more money for a home that is not worth what the appraised value is, right? That would be a huge liability for them. So that's why the lender is going to want to see an appraisal. The lender is going to order the appraisal. All right, so let's talk about the next uh, point is the survey. A survey is typically ordered by the, uh, the title company or the closing company, and it's going to essentially reveal the lot line or the boundaries of the property, any easements, map out all of the permitted structures that exist on the property, um, and your elevation certificate, which typically accompanies the survey, is going to identify, of course, the elevation that the home sits on. And if you have any special flood hazard uh, zones that your home is sitting in, that your lender would require you to purchase additional um, flood hazard insurance. So lender's going to require that document, the title company is gonna order it. So the next thing that you're gonna see happen within this time frame is a title commitment letter. This is gonna come, of course, from the title company or the closing company, and it's going to spell out any outstanding items that need to be cleared up or paperwork that's going to be required in order for the title company to issue you um, a title insurance policy and a clear title, convey a clear title from the old owner to you, the new purchaser. The title insurance really is designed to protect you from any unforeseen problems that could affect your title, cloud your title. These would be things like a tax lien, forged signatures on old documents um, in the chain of title, any kind of recording errors, um, title search errors or claims that like made by missing heirs or ex-spouse or anything like that, okay? The title insurance is very, very important for us to get um, to reduce your liability. So they check all of that stuff for you. All right, another thing that you might see if you are purchasing a home in a homeowner's association or a condo association is an estoppel letter. Okay, your lender is going to require this and the title company is going to require this to verify your good standing or the seller's good standing with the association. The title company is actually going to be the party who orders this estoppel letter and it's going to come from the association and it's going to let us know if there are any outstanding unpaid association dues, fines, anything like that that would encumber the property. 
um, we'll get that checked out and validate that it's all clear. All right, so as far as timeline goes, the next milestone is going to occur around day 30, and that's going to be the loan approval. Again, if you're making a cash purchase, you don't have to worry about this. But if you are financing your purchase around the 30 day mark, unless it's been negotiated otherwise on your contract, um, is going to be your loan approval due date. And essentially what we wanna see is an approval letter coming from your lender saying that either you have a conditional loan approval or a full loan approval, that all of the paperwork that they've requested has been turned in, their underwriter has validated that everything looks good and that you are going to be able to obtain a loan from them. This letter is really important because it lets us know just a few days before closing that everything is on track and that is typically shared with at least the selling agent on the listing side of the property who's representing the seller so that they understand, yes, we're good to go, everything's proceeding forward, there are no unexpected hiccups at this point. So about a week prior to your closing, you're gonna be working on things like tr making sure your transfer of utilities are scheduled, confirming your moving plans, um, setting a date for the final walkthrough with your agent, uh, it's just gonna be to verify that nothing new has come up since the last time you saw the house. Um, there's not like a new gaping hole in the roof or you know they didn't forget to cut the grass and now the grass is like up to your waist. All of that stuff, you're just gonna check the home one last time before you actually go and sign for the purchase. Okay, now we're sitting just a few days before our closing. You wanna make sure one last thing that you have um, secured homeowner's insurance poli policy and that policy is bound and you've gotten that information to your lender. Now where we sit, we should have our loan approval, we should have conducted our final walkthrough and we should be waiting for our clear to close. Once we, re we receive our clear to close, which means our lender is talking to the title company, the title co company is talking to the lender, both of them have reviewed the final figures, they match, everybody is on the same page, looking at the final figu figures and everything is approved, then we're ready to go to closing. Your closing date time and location will be arranged either by the transaction coordinator or by the closing company, the title company themselves. Your title company is gonna verify with you the final end number due that you're gonna want to send to them to wire to them. And remember, the title company is the third party. They are unbiased. They are there to facilitate the um, successful sale for both you and the other party, so they're unbiased. If you wire your money to them ahead of time, it does not mean that your money is gone. It just means that it's sitting there in a safe place with a third party ready for when we are going to go to the closing table and sign the final documents. Once both parties have signed all of the closing documents, the money is there with the title company, the lender gives their stamp of approval on everything that's been signed, then they'll let us know the, the contract is funded, everything is closed, and you can release the keys. And then you can really jump for joy because at this point, you're all done, the home is yours, you did it, you successfully made it to the closing without a hitch. Congratulations. All right, that is the contract in a nutshell. It's pretty specific, but it's really important um, here at the Carroll Home Team that we have informed clients. It is integral to making sure that you are happy, expectations are met, and that we are able to successfully accomplish your goals hand in hand. So if you need anything, let me know. Rachel Carroll with the Carroll Home Team. Um, if you are somebody who is looking for a home in our area and you wanna be represented by the best agents, give us a call, please. Uh, the phone number that you're gonna use is 772-494-5422. 772-494-5422. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call us. We're here to help. Thank you so much.